Hey guys, what's up? Rajat here from VFX World. Welcome back to my channel. Hope you guys are doing absolutely fine. Guys, in this video, we'll talk about Nuke 3D camera tracking inside of Nuke. X, the most searched content in Nuke learning community, in fact in YouTube as well. And this will be a lot of fun. So without wasting any time, let's get started. So guys, right now we're in Nuke X and this is 11.2 version and I really love this version, the most stable version ever and as you can see in front of your screen that uh, this is a 3D camera tracking tutorial and I already have this kind of tutorial two years back I uploaded this video but that was completely based on music, I didn't explain anything, I didn't describe anything like what to do, why I should do that uh, and why you should do that, something like that. So that's why I decided let's create another uh, 3D tracking tutorial with, with more information, more descriptions and all. So I hope you really enjoyed this and uh, if you're still not subscribed do subscribe and also please like this video or you can dislike it as well okay so uh, now if you notice that this is my basic 3d camera tracking with cool motion blur and all and i added some random uh, like uh, objects to show you that the track is not slipped or the track is not happening wrong or something like that uh, so uh, first of all just go through with my this chart and this is very messed up so before doing everything i just have to delete delete everything yes I have to delete all to show you entire thing like this so it's deleted and we already set our project settings the footage is in 720p if you want this footage link is in description just go and download and if you want to use this footage you just have to use hashtag VFX world that's it it's completely free okay uh, so now if you notice we already set our project by pressing s you can set your project uh, in this video i'll start with some scratch so that's why those who guys are beginners they can learn from this video okay uh, so after that this is our full file size format which is 1280 by 720p which is our input resolution and after that as you all know we have to take our 3d camera track so it's called camera tracker something like that and when it's imported we have to go through its few options like this is camera tracker basic option then you call user tracks auto track settings scenes output and node in this uh, camera tracker we have this input which is source which is in sequence which is in footage and after that the mask the mask option will become when you have some specific area to be tracked so let me show you how it will work so if you have a roto node something like that just connect it to here and uh, let's go to this camera track again and then go to the settings option and then turn on this preview features so when you turn on this preview features you can see the tracking markers which will be tracked when you click the track button but when you go to the roto node and if you make sure like you can take some shapes something like that now I want to be tracked in this only this area okay but uh, so go to this camera track and make sure the mask option should be source inverted alpha when you click here you can see only this much area will be tracked and the track are right now only in this much area so in this way you can track your specific uh, like uh, specific input radius uh, which you really want to track you don't need to track the unwanted areas it can decrease your maximum track error data or it can increase your uh, good tracking data as well so in this footage I don't need that kind of thing so I delete this roto alpha node and uh, double click and make sure it should be none and let's show you that how the more details will work the camera motion like I have the camera will moving in free so that's why I added the free motion if you have your like tripod or something like that then you can use the rotational only linear motion and all lens distortion you can use if you know about your lens distortion mode and all focal length if you know your focal length you can go from known and then just make some customs like uh, this is a film backside which is your completely sensor size and make it in default because I don't know exactly the film size what is in this footage and go to the user track it will come after doing some tracking data and all auto track also I'll describe after a few times settings I have shown you like preview features there are a maximum number of features like this have like uh, maximum numbers of trackers if you increase this like make around 300 it will increase uh, something like that uh, in my case I added only 300 is good enough and because I need some good tracking markers this is a maximum minimum length three shoals and all smooth let's make all this in default I make this camera motion in 
and free camera and after that scene output and note these are things are right now not needed and in future if i'll create a more advanced tutorial then maybe i will explain these options a little bit okay after when you're happy with your settings and all you just make sure you have to check your frame range my frame range is like 1 to 200 so let's change to this range to from global so now it's from 1 to 200 and let's uh, click this track button so now it start tracking it will take some time so when it's tracking i just want to tell you that if you have any interest in artistic a drawing and painting something like that then you should check this youtube channel it's just amazing this is my friend's channel and many of guys you know about snehashish banerji who already made in our channel some match move tutorials then you should check out his channel this amazing artworks and make sure you have to subscribe also subscribe vfx world as well so now the tracking is completely done but still it's something left so we have to solve our tracking and now this thing is not solved so when you click this solve it will start solving and it's take very less time like so one second now see it's done when you click the solve this thing will be popped up on in front of your screen and now you have to go to this auto track option now the main thing will come now if you notice the solve error data is 0 0.7 which is a very good track in fact whatever is coming like under one i'll calculate in fact industry calculate it's as a good track so now our tracking data is 0 0.7 which is a good track but you can make this tracking information to be more good more precise so that's why i created this advanced duty tracking tutorial so let's go down let's see what happened now we have this kind of options like minimum length maximum tracked error like max error and refinement and all so before doing anything you just have to do a few simple steps so the first one is you have to reject all this unwanted unsolved data or trackers so just click this delete unsolved yes and delete rejected and yes this is what i do every time you can do the next step as well which i'll show you and uh, now what happened we have only the green markers which is a well tracked for the nuke informations and now if you go up you can see the solver error data is 0.691 is decreased because I deleted all those points and all uh, now we have to increase in fact we have to make this uh, tracking data to more precise to more accurate so for that what you have to do we have this minimum length and all now what you have to do just click here track length minimum and then control and then click this minimum length so now this will come in front of your screen now the blue data is called the tracking data and all like uh, the errors and all something like that now the purple line is your baseline now when you increase this minimum length you can see this purple line will go up in fact you can see in your screen when you go really up you can see there is too many red dots will be coming now we have to move this line to top of this like some Something like that no need to move really up so that the tracking data may be lost now after that we have to refine it more so now we have to click this uh, error like uh, RMS and after that this max tracked error by pressing control you can click so that both will calculate here now this is very small so press F to fit to screen now this max tracked error layer is really up and this one is really down which is error RMS and after that we have to decrease this max track error layer so just click and go down 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 and down so now you can see there are so many lots of red tracked marker will popped up it means these are the tracks will not well tracked after a few frames and if you in decrease it a little more it's not a big deal but don't decrease too much it's it's good enough and after that we have to uh, make sure the max tracking error should be a good refining then click this error mask and click this error option and after that you can see still it's going really up so you have to decrease this little bit more i decrease it something like that so now what happened we have all set f it's completely up to you it's just about your uh, experience that how much you should decrease how much you should increase something like that so to play around with this play with all the settings bars and all and you can get your good information good result and after that you have to press this delete unsolved because we don't need this uh, markers just click delete unsolved press yes and delete rejected and yes now what happened of everything is gone now we have to resolve or refine our solve data for that we have to check box this focal length position and rotation and then now our previous data is like 0 0.61 which is uh, after refining refine solved and you can see this is our right now it's 0 0.6 which is very less and very good data you can use this tracking data as well now if you can see there are so many red dots will still come now you can still delete this unsolved so that it can decrease a little bit more 
now we have five nine really good now we have all set up now go to this camera track now the tracking method is right now done now we have to show you how you can put this data to your live options or live kind of thing now let me tell you something really interesting now we have this options like uh, camera camera rig something like that now before doing anything you have to make sure your ground plane so i have to select these other points by pressing shift you can select this multiple points so what exactly it will do it actually create your uh, ground plane now right click and ground plane and then set to select it so now what happened these are the points will calculate as your ground plane so it means this is your base now what you have to do you just have to go to the scene option and then just press this create option now if you create from this checkbox on link output you can see the link option will always connect with this camera it means whatever you will change your uh, camera setup and all it will automatically update with this camera but I preferred uh, don't do this it's just very harassment and something like that so uh, just remove this option and then just press create so now what happened when you go to the scene and go to this area by pressing tab you can go to the 3d view and you can see these are all in your ground and your tracks are right now looking like this okay this is really looking good now guys let me tell you something that for rendering this 3d format in 2d we need our render option which is called scanline renderer so press tab and take a scanline renderer which is look like this after that connect with this viewer and as you can see there's a bg pipe object scene and camera and all so let's take a dot by pressing dot yes and then just connect with this bg and uh, bg is our background and then just connect it something like that always you should make sure your scenes should be in precise and this is done and after that you can see there's a called camera button just connect with this camera object scene should be connected to the scene okay now this is all done now we have our scanline renderer, scenes, camera track and all. Now let's see the tracks are happening good or not. By pressing tab, you will go to there and let's press this play button. So now you can see these tracks are just amazing. The depth and all is just looking good. Now what we have to do, we have to create our card to see that it's really tracked good or not. Okay, so go to the first frame. Now I don't need this camera tracker point cloud data every time. It's really, really awkward to see something like that in front of the screen every time. So press D to disable this something. And then just go to camera track by pressing one. Now we have to create our card. So now take this uh, trackers and right click and then create and then press this card. So now what happened, one card will be automatically popped up here. Now we have to connect this card to the scene because whatever you will create any three dimensional thing, you should connect with the scene because without scene, you can't see it via this scanline renderer. This is the main thing. So whatever you will import any 3D data and something like that, you have to connect with the scene. Okay, and now what I have to do, just make sure without having any texture, you can't see this card. So pressing tab here, We'll go to the 3D view. Now, see, this is a card without any texture. Now, take a checkerboard like this and connect with this. Now, double click here. You have this cool checkerboard textures on it. And now, go to the scene by pressing one. Now, this is our basic scene. Now, this, this card is in this direction. So, we have to rotate it. Let's take around uh, something like 90. So, now it's rotated. Yep, pretty good. By pressing tab, you can go to this two-dimensional view which is this one now it looks really messed up but trust me you can do a lot of thing here now decrease the scale value something uh, like that now what I have to do you have to rotate it and all and just have to make sure that it should match this perspective so to, to make this rotation you have to go through the rotation values by pressing shift you can rotate it very fast and something like that now we have to rotate and make sure the perspective should be uh, good enough then you can increase this uh, scale value so in my case it's almost look like really good and uh, after when you're happy with your all tracking data you can simply increase the shapes but i prefer to increase the shapes from here because we want uh, this card to be go in depth and uh, make sure this should be go something like that so now everything is set up completely now now if you want you can create some multiple objects here multiple random things here but in this kind of tutorial i will not uh, like stretch this tutorial to show you everything same way but just for the information i just want to show you that if you want to add many things you just press tab and take a like cube and then just click here and then connect with the scene and obviously you should check this texture as well and double click and if you want to decrease the shapes it should decrease it something like that you can increase it from here as well and then just move your shapes whatever you want to add something so let's uh, move the shapes 
to here it's good enough and when you go to the z axis uh, sorry when you go to this uh, 2d view you can see this is your uh, car box which is a well tracked area and if you play this you can see uh, these other tracks are really happening good now uh, this is really looking solid so let's make it a little bit transparent and motion blur as well so i don't need this cube just delete this and to make this transparent and blend and all just take tab and take a multiply merge and then just connect with this A pipe it should go here and B pipe will this BG and automatically it will look like this I know so just go here double click here and then just from here operation should be like copy and after that decrease this mix rate so now you can see the transparency with this input like the card should be like transparent something like that okay so now if you want to add some motion blurs just press tab take a motion blur node not 2D not 3D only the simple motion blur and just simply connect with this so now what happened let me show you let's go to the hundredth number frame and now see it's already taking some time now disable this by pressing d so this is your without motion blur see this edges and this is your with motion blur okay so these are the happening will when you add this motion blur and after everything it will render completely it will exactly look like this so guys i hope you really enjoyed this amazing advanced 3d camera tracking in detail tutorial inside of nuke x and if you like this video then please do subscribe also and also you can dislike it's completely up to you and if you still not follow us on our social media handles like facebook instagram linkedin and twitter then just go what are you waiting for all links are in description box below and obviously i'll see you in my next amazing video with more interesting content so till then have fun stay healthy and keep rocking keep supporting vfx world